हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर डी वी प्रसाद फ्रॉम इंदिरा गांधी नेशनल ट्राइबल यूनिवर्सिटी अमरकंटक टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द मॉड्यूल यूनिटी एंड डाइवर्सिटी इन इंडियन सोसाइटी एंड कल्चर फ्रॉम द पेपर इंडियन एंथ्रोपोलॉजी लेट अस सी व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न फ्रॉम दिस मॉड्यूल टू स्टडी the importance of unity and diversity of the indian society and culture and from this module we would like to know about the origin of diversity in india through history to study the distribution of the diverse elements of the indian population to understand the reasons leading to unity in india the indian subcontinent can be rightly regarded as a galaxy of diverse elements whose preponderance can be felt in every strata of indian culture and society through years of isolation and intermixing subjugation and uprising tolerance and penetrance india has witnessed a history of experimenting cultures giving rise to new forms whose diversity can be felt in the plurality of ethnic groups religions languages occupational units and social political groups this diversity can be readily attributed to the past comprising of years of migration intermixing invasions and compared to isolation through the natural geographical boundaries the period of change and in the current scenario standing with a total population of 1.21 billion india presents a kaleidoscope of varying cultures and traditions moving from the prehistoric period to vedic period we find the emergence of faith although it was in the recipient of form it diffused from one region to the other then with the advent of aryans the penetrance of aryanized values differed in the different tribal communities giving rise to different interpretations and analogous inheritance over generations though hierarchical system was common everywhere its rigid varied from region to region so hinduism emerged but not much as a religion but as a conglomeration of different practices but same ideology with the immigration of other stronger religious communities in india especially islam and christianity which persisted over a long period in india an amalgamation of customs and the fusion of teachings development of tolerance and togetherness enriched the soil of india the religions like judaism and zoroastrianism which came from the other lands of the world confined themselves to the small pockets of the indian subcontinent whereas the other religions like buddhism jainism and sikhism which developed in india restricted themselves to fixed zones and did not diffuse much similar influence of migration was seen when people belonging to different ethnic groups came and settled in india they mixed with the local population exchanged and adopted their socio biological traits and articulated new forms of customs and social designs resulting in a diversity of physical features forms and lifestyles the affiliation of people to such a diverse linguistic family proves the strength of the cultural roots of india similar distribution is still prevalent in the tribal 
diversity of India, some of which are still away from the present world of urbanization and modernization. Following their ancient traditional values, our country passed through the stages of cultural evolution from where it moved from the nature, spirit and ancestor worship to the following one more religious teachings. It has faced the complexity of caste system to the agony of proselytization. Despite the differences observed in our social structural formulation, we find acceptance, tolerance and adjustability at its very core. Our constitution also grants us the status of a sovereign, secular, socialist and democratic republic which we all enjoy with pride and joy. We are diverse yet united and it is the key to the our strength. Indian history of diversity, the prehistory of India. According to available proofs, the prehistory of India can be traced back to the second interglacial period between 4 lakh and 2 lakh BC when the use of stone tools is recorded. The other archaeological evidences include cave paintings, burial sites, skeletal remains, ornaments, pottery, bone tools, megalith remains with the use of iron, bronze and even gold along with the metaphysical thoughts of ancient people through the remains found around their skeletons and dwelling sites. Proto-history of India Indus Valley civilization in the western frontier marked the beginning of the proto-historic cultures of India. This was an advanced civilization which flourished between 2500 to 1500 BC. The Indus Valley civilization is known for its town planning, the dockyard, the agricultural practice, domestication of animals, tools and technology including cloth weaving, ornament making, use of metals, wheels, pottery, etc. Political organization and architecture, trade, craft work, religion and their unique script which has still not been deciphered. The Indian history of diversity, the Vedic period, the advent of the Vedic era started with the arrival of Aryans in India. The migration happened in smaller groups of related tribes over centuries. These Aryans were the nomadic pastorals who also practiced agriculture for fulfilling their basic needs. They did not bring any civilization with them, but owned a strong culture rooted in their beliefs, practices and crafts. They had a flair for poetry, philosophy and art. They composed hymns in praise of their gods. They were racist and considered themselves to be superior over the other indigenous inhabitants of India, whom they referred by derogatory names. They practiced endogamy and brought the concept of purity and pollution to India for the first time. This led to the emergence of Varna and later Jati system in India and laid the foundation of the first structural and behavioral social systems in India. Indian history of diversity, the impact of other cultures on Indian population can be seen in the following. The long history of migration, ecological diversity, cultural ethos. In India, migration took place principally from three regions. Number one, the northwest corridor. Number two, the northeast corridor. Number three, the Malabar coast, Kerala. The dimensions of plurality in India. Ethnic diversity. India is a home for 
over 4000 mendelian populations all of the major ethnic groups of the world are found in india the standard criteria for distinguish between the various ethnic groups is based upon the stature and build of the body skin color head form facial form nose form eye features etc the most accepted racial classification in india was given by b s guha in 1935 where he divided the indian population into six major races that is negrito proto australite mongoloid mediterraneans western brachis cephals and nordics guha's classification of indian population you can see the diagram where guha classified the indian population into different categories first comes to negrito the second proto australite then comes to the third paleo mongolites the mediterraneans western brachis cephals and nordics the mongolites there are some subtypes also he classified you can see paleo mongolite tibeto mongolite again the mediterranean also subdivided into two paleo mediterranean mediterranean and the western brachis cephals are divided into three subtypes they are alpinoids dinaric armenoids ethnic diversity of india you can see the map here the distribution of racial groups provided by vijay sohai pradeep ke singh which is published in indian anthropology 1998 where they have given some circles where dravidian population northeast population negrito population and mediterranean and all these the classification were shown in the map the negritos negritos are identified by short stature slightly protruding jaws pulley hair bulbous forehead smooth supra orbital ridges broad and flat nose they are considered to be the earliest inhabitants of india the important tribes having negrito characteristics in india are the kadars and the panians of cochin the irula of tamil nadu the wongi and andamanis of andaman islands the proto australite they have dark brown skin color dark and slightly wavy and curly hair long head and less developed and slightly receding forehead dark eyes and broad and depressed nose the proto australis are supposed to have arrived soon after the negrito in india they constitute the tribals living in central and south india and also some lower caste groups of north india they you can see the picture he belongs to proto australoid the mongolites guha divided the mongolites into two sub groups they are paleo mongolite tibeto mongolite the paleo mongolite physical features are the long headed ones have dark light brown skin color long head short and fat face prominent cheek bones short stature whereas broad headed ones have dark skin color a little broader head epicanthic fold and medium stature they belong to assam and indo myanmar border tibeto mongolites they have light brown skin color broad head long flat face epicanthic fold medium long nose and they are represented by the tibetans of bhutan and sikkim you can see the picture where tibeto mongolaid you can see guha divided the mediterraneans into two sub groups paleo mediterranean and the mediterraneans the paleo mediterraneans they have dark skin color dark wavy and curly hair dalico cephalic and bulbous head narrow face pointed chin 
small and broad nose and medium stature. The Mediterraneans they have light skin color, arched forehead, well developed chin, and brownish dark eyes. They are medium to tall stature. Fisher classified Mediterraneans further as oriental type who differ from Mediterraneans in having long and convex nose. These are all found among Brahmins of Madurai, Cochin, Allahabad and Andhra Pradesh. The Orientals are found among Pathans of Punjab, Sin and Rajputs. Western Brachy Cephalics. They are divided into three subtypes, Alpanoid, Dinaric and Armenoids. Alpanoids, they are characterized by light skin color, brownish dark hair, broad head, dark brown eyes and prominent nose and they are having medium to medium stature for example Banya and Khati of Gujarat, Khaista of Bengal. Then comes to second Dinaric. They have darker skin color and hair, long head, receding forehead, dark eyes, long nose and tall stature. Third criteria is urbanites. They differ from generic people in having a more prominent narrow and curved nose and a more prominent occiput. For example, Parsis of Mumbai. The Nordics or the Aryans constitute the last major wave of immigrants into India. These are very fair, have brown to dark hair, arched forehead, strong jaws, eyes with bluish tinge and a tall and well built body. These are represented by the inhabitants of North India that is Punjab and Rajasthan. Religious diversity of India. India is a land of diverse religious practices. Some of the major religions of India include Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Jainism and Sikhism etc. According to the 2001 census, the percentage of composition of different religious groups in India was Hindus constitute 80.5%. Muslims 13.4%, Christians 2.3%, Sikhs 1.9%, Buddhists 0.8%, Jains 0.4% and other religions constitute 0.6%. Though the religions are different in their time of arrival or emergence in India but over a time a syncretic tendency and tolerance has developed which helps in holding the roots of unity in diversity concept of India. Religious diversity. You can see the pictures that the symbols representing the major religion religions of India. First, you can see the symbol of Hinduism. Second, you can see the symbol of Islam and third you can see the symbol of the Jains, then fourth Buddhists, then fifth it is Christians. Likewise every each and major religion are projected in terms of these pictures. Religious diversity, Hinduism is considered one of the oldest traditions of the world, mostly considered as a group of interconnected traditions that than a religion. Has no founding figure, the major religion of India believes in polytheism. When it comes to Islam, it is one of the major religion of the world founded by Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. Their sacred text is Quran. It is entered India through Malabar coast, Kerala and was also later introduced in the northern regions by invaders like Muhammad of Ghur, Muhammad of Ghazni, Babar, etc. Indian Muslims are divided into two communities, the Sunni and Shia. They are monotheist and follow 
different schools of Islam. Christianity. It is entered through two migration waves in India, first in the 52 AD to the Malabar coast of Kerala when St. Thomas arrived and converted the locals and second in the colonial period when the British converted the local people especially belonging to the weaker sections of the society through their missionaries. The Indian churches are divided into Roman Catholics and uh, Protestants. When comes to Sikhism, it was found by Guru Nanak Dev and was spread through his nice successors. Its teachings are inspired by the Bhakti movement of Hinduism and Sufi tradition of Islam. He abolished any social distinction and believed in the equality of people. The Sikhs worship in Gurudwara and follow a holy book called the Guru Granth Sahib. The Religious Diversity Jainism It was founded by Mahavira and is now restricted only to a few regions of Gujarat and Mysore. The two major divisions of Jainism are Digambara and Svetambara. Digambara are uncloth and Svetambara are white cloth. The Jainism teaches equality and is open to all classes whose membership is dependent on one's personal acts and aptitude and not any ascribed status. However, Jains do have endogamous jatis. A recent study estimated around 60 endogamous groups with less than 100 individuals per group. The other religions, some of the other religions practiced by small group of people in India including Buddhism, Zoroastrianism and Judaism etc. The linguistic distribution. India being a country of pluralistic traditions and values owing to its geographical terrain and boundaries. The social contact, the migration pattern and their transfer over generations has influenced the regional language of India to a great extent. It gives a person his social identity and a means to build relationships on being at a distance from his cultural group. Sir George Grierson worked on languages and identified 179 languages and 554 dialects in India. In 1961 census, a survey was conducted which concluded that around 187 languages are spoken by different sections of the country, out of which 94 languages are spoken by less than 10,000 people of India. There are 22 official languages recognized by the Constitution of India. According to the linguistic distribution of the nation, four major languages families have been identified which also demonstrate the tribal diversity of our country. These four amongst them first one is Austro-Asiatic family. It is said to have originated in the Indochina and spread towards east. The Austric are the offshoots of the Mediterranean people who came to India from west and were regarded as Nishads by the Aryans. Its subfamily include Munda and Mankhemar. Munda spoken by the inhabitants of the hill tribes of Bihar, Chota Nagpur and other parts of central India. The languages spoken includes the Mundari, Birhor, Korku, Juwang, Gadaba, Therwari. In Mankhemar spoken by the Khasi, Jaintya and some Nicobaris. The Sino-Tibetan family. The speakers are generally of Mongoloid origin who seem to have come from eastern frontier. They were regarded as Kiratas by the Aryans. Their subfamilies are Simias. It includes the Thai group of language under which only one language Thamti falls. Tibeto-Burman. Under the Tibeto-Himalayan branch, the Bhotia group 
is represented by languages like Ladakhi, Laholi, Hotia, Sherpa and the Himalayan group by the languages like Tamang, Rai, Dhimal, Chamba, Jangali and Lepcha. The North Assam branch is spoken by the inhabitants of the Northeast frontier and includes the languages like Aka, Adi, Miri, Mishimi, etc. The Assam Burmese branch has the following groups Boro, Naga, and Kachim. Boro language includes Bodo, Lalung, Dhimasa, Garo, Tripuri, and Mikhil. In Naga languages include Angami, Ho, Kabui, Rengma, Tankul, Konyak, etc. The Kachim language includes Kavri and Singpo. Kuki Chin, the language include Kuki, Ralte, Mizo, Aimal, Kom, and Mal. Arkan Burmese include Methi language. When it comes to Dravidian family, the subfamilies include South. Languages include Tamil, Malayalam, Kannada, Telugu, Toda, Kota, and Kur. When it comes to the central area, languages include Kui, Kolami, Gondi, Koya, Kon, and Poja. Then North languages include Oran and Malto. The Indo-European family, the subfamily include Iranian. It includes languages of the foreign origin like Persia, Pashto, Balochi. And Dardic group includes the languages like Wai, Allah, also known as Kafir, Khowar and Dardi, Shina, Kashmiri and Kohistani. Indo-Aryan, the outer branch consists of languages like Punjabi, Sindhi, Marathi and Konkani and Oriya, Bihari, Bengali and Assamese. The inner branch consists of languages like Hindi, Urdu, Punjabi, Gujarati, Rajasthani and Pahari group consist of the languages like Nepali, Kumaon, Garhwali and Jhonsari, Sirmauri, Handuri, Mondi and Bhagatiyati. The linguistic diversity of India. India being a country of pluralistic traditions and values owing to its geographical terrain and boundaries, the social contact the migration pattern and the transfer over generation has influenced the regional languages of India to great extent. It gives a person his social identity and a means to build relationship on being at a distance from his cultural group. Sir George Grierson worked on languages and identified 179 languages and 554 dialects in India. And there are 22 official languages recognized by the constitution of India. According to the linguistic distribution of the nation, four major language families have been identified, which also demonstrate the tribal diversity of our country. They are Austro-Asiatic family, consisting Munda and Mankhemar. Second, Sino-Tibetan family, consisting Siamese, Tibeto-Burman. Third, Dravidian. And fourth, Indo-European. Dravidian consisting of South, Central and North, Indo-European, Iranian, Dardic and Indo-Aryan. The elements of unity in India. Besides the diversity in India, you can see some of the features that are bringing the unity in India. They are the Indian family, kinship and society. Because the patrilineal influence of Jati and hence the village relations provides a social identity which is essential for trust and reputation building leading to a fraternal as well as organic solidarity in society. The status of a sovereign, socialist and secular and democratic country granted by the constitution of India 
in the form of numerous articles which help in bringing all the people of India to an equal study by promoting the upliftment of women and weaker sections of the society, preventing discrimination and promoting secular reforms. Besides that, there are some other elements which are also bringing the unity in India. They are the sharing of elements of tolerance, acceptance and adaptability. Further, the social reformers, they work to eliminate the evils existing in society. Some of them include Raja Mo, Ram Mohan Rai Brahma Samaj, Swami Dayanand Saraswati Arya Samaj, Swami Vivekananda Ramakrishna Mission, Sir Sahid Ahmad Khan Muslim Reformers. Let us summarize what we learned in this module. India is a diverse in every aspect of the elements defining a population. Most profoundly, it can be observed in the ethnic, linguistic and religious diversity of India. Several years of migration, intermixing, invasions and comparative isolation has resulted in a varied profile of India. The origin of society can be observed in stages by peeping through the growth and distribution of population starting from the prehistoric to the post-historic to the Vedic and later to the modern world, modern period. The shift in technology and mode of living ensure better service, survival chances and social evolution which made people to realize the importance of interdependence and division of labor. So, many different social elements came together which resulted in social dynamics operating differently in different regions. The advent of Aryans brought the concept of social hierarchy in the form of Varna, Jati and caste system. The diversity of India can be understood by studying the ethnic groups of India, linguistic diversity and religious diversity. The Austro-Asiatic, Sino-Tibetan, Dravidian and Indo-European, these further divided into subfamilies and branches and groups. The major religions of India include Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, Sikhism and Jainism. The units of solidarity of the country are the Indian, family, kinship and society. The status of a sovereign, socialist and secular and democratic country. And the sharing of elements of tolerance, acceptance of adaptability, the social reformers. Thank you.